How's it going everyone? Eddie Martinez here with The Recording Connection and welcome to your additional supplemental video for lesson number 10, an introduction to Pro Tools. So in this video what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and cover some more Pro Tools basics. So go ahead and fire up your Pro Tools and we'll get started. Alright guys, so hopefully you have a Pro Tools session brought up. If you don't have a Pro Tools session brought up, don't worry about it. Just go ahead and follow along, take notes, and apply this information to your next session. So what we're going to be learning right now is how to set up an auxiliary track and actually this is a really important lesson because you know once you start recording a great artist essentially what's going to end up happening is you're going to have you know you know 20 tracks 32 tracks you know 60 tracks or even more and a lot of the times uh, you're going to be reusing the same exact effects over and over again like reverb or delay now reverb and delay and like chorus there's something uh, that are, that's actually called global effects and global effects means that a lot of times it could be, uh, you know, an effect that's used over many tracks. So rather than going ahead and uh, or going ahead and creating plenty of, you know, reverb, you know, uh, tracks on each and every individual track. Let's say you have a drum kit or something like that that has uh, the same type of reverb, and uh, you don't want to create six different tracks or seven or eight different tracks with reverb on it. You can go ahead and create an auxiliary channel, uh, which will actually house that uh, reverb so that you don't have to create many many uh, tracks for this uh, another really good thing about doing that well obviously the first one is you know creating multiple tracks is wasteful and it will slow down your system so you definitely don't want to do that um, and that, that's pretty much the main reason but also the second reason what I would say is that uh, it helps kind of build continuity uh, between reverbs on each track you know if each reverb sounded a little bit differently it might kind of uh, end up you know, working against uh, your mix. So you want to kind of have a similar sounding reverb uh, for most of your recordings and uh, most of your tracks. So that's where the auxiliary track actually comes to play. So let's go ahead and uh, figure out how to do an auxiliary track, which is actually a lot easier than what it sounds. Uh, I'm going to hit Command Plus, bring up my uh, window for uh, mixing. Okay, so here we are. And as you can see right now, uh, only a few tracks and uh, no auxiliary track whatsoever. So what we're going to go ahead and do is we're going to go ahead and uh, listen to this loop right here that we created in the previous video and uh, hear it with absolutely no effect. So as you can tell, there's no uh, inserts here on this effect, no uh, sending or buses uh, just yet. So we're going to hit play and hear how it sounds with no effect. Hey, 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 yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, so that was a you know dry vocal, no effect, no nothing. Uh, let's go ahead and create an auxiliary track and add some reverb. Okay, so uh, what you could do is hit Command Shift N, or you could of course go to uh, you know track and then go to New, and it'll bring up this menu. However you want to do it, uh, we're going to go ahead and create a stereo track. We're going to go down to auxiliary input and hit Create. So there we are. We have our new. Uh, auxiliary track right here and pretty much we're halfway done so it's actually a pretty simple little process uh, one of the first things I like to do is hit solo uh, just to make sure that we get the sound at the end another thing uh, I like to do is create a bus and this is the first thing you should do is create the bus and we're gonna go ahead and create a uh, bus one and two which means that um, whatever whatever signal that we're going to be getting will end up going to uh, bus one and two, which is going to be its final destination. It's like saying, you know, this is your end point. So let's go ahead and, and uh, do that right now. Okay, the next thing we're going to want to do, and this is pretty simple, all we're going to do is we're going to go back to the track which we'd like to go ahead and send this uh, signal to and create a bus there as well. So uh, we're going to go to the send area, and we're, it's like saying we're going to send this bus to this destination. Uh, so it's real simple. We'll go down to bus. If you didn't see how I did that, let me go ahead and redo that real quick. I went to send, went to uh, bus. I'm going to bus A, and I'm creating that right there. And uh, essentially what ends up happening is it builds this little uh, fader track right here with a couple little options right here. Uh, so essentially this is uh, what will allow the amount of signal to be, uh, the signal from this particular channel to be sent over to this final destination where we're going to have our reverb. So all we need to do from here is uh, go to our inserts, create the reverb, multi-channel plugin, down a reverb, we're going to grab a, re a D reverb, or the D verb, pardon me, and uh, go ahead and just uh, select a factory preset. I'm going to go ahead and go to plate, go to medium, 
slide this over just a tad to 1.5 seconds because I know that's the way I like my, my reverb. Uh, close that out. And then what we're going to do is we're going to gradually, using this fader, bring in the effect to this particular auxiliary channel. Okay? So I'm going to hit play and then we're going to slowly bring in this effect. And here's the, the big reason why you want to do this. If you start with your fader all the way up, you might say, oh, that sounds great. And, uh, you know, you play it back and it sounds, you know, you could definitely hear the reverb. Uh, but essentially this will work against your mix because uh, you might have more reverb than is actually necessary. So it's always a good idea to kind of like listen closely and just ease that fader up uh, and uh, decide at that point. Use your ears as a reference point, not your eyes, I guess. So let me go ahead and hit play and you'll see exactly what I mean. Hey, 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 yeah, 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 hey, 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 yeah, 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 hey, 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 yeah, 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 yeah. So I kind of like it right there at a positive 3.5 decibels. So now what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and unsolo these and hear how it sounds with the rest of the mix. And then that's it. That's using, that's creating an auxiliary uh, track for, uh, for Pro Tools. Hey, 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 yeah, 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 hey, hey, hey. Alright guys, so definitely use this information on your next uh, projects and things like that. Uh, it's actually a lot of fun, it's not so hard, and uh, yeah, good luck! Alright guys, that's all the information that I have for you today, but of course it's up to you to put this knowledge to use. Now don't forget to jump back into your Recording Connection workbook and just double check to see if you have any mandatory supplemental reading assignments to turn in for this week. Now if you feel shaky on any of this material, what you need to do is go back into your provided textbook and reread that material. Just remember that these videos are only a supplement to your education. Okay? Now if you're watching this video online and you want to know more about the recording process uh, and you want to learn how to become a recording engineer in just six months, what you need to do is you need to check out the recordingconnection.com or call the provided number. RSAP is actually going to set you up with an engineer in your town or in a town near you. We have tons of locations all across the U.S. and parts of Canada, and we're actually really proud to say that we have more than a 72% higher in success rate thanks to our student advisor that comes with your enrollment. So I hope you guys all enjoyed the video, and I'll catch you guys a little bit later.